Today is Monday, December 10th, and this is the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or Archer Daniels Midland Company. Today's guests are Steve Freed, Vice President of Grain Research at ADMIS, and Alan Bush, ADM Investor Services Senior Financial Economist. Steve, start with the grain markets this morning. Soybeans, corn, wheat, and the GSCI Commodity Index all rallied last week. Why is that? I think there were two reasons. Number one, there was some optimism about uh, China coming in and, and actually starting to buy uh, grain from the United States. Uh, the president of China in Argentina said he would buy it, and so um, he's a man of his word, and so people started looking at that as a positive sign. We also heard that China uh, la last week, for the first time in months, started asking for prices of U.S. soybeans off the Pacific Northwest. Also, um, Russia and OPEC kind of came out with some ideas that they were going to cut production, rallied the crude. So when you look at crude, when you look at the Goldman Sachs index, and you look at some of the commodities, they're all the same. They bought them the same day, and they rallied about, about the same amount last week. Now, tomorrow we have the USDA monthly crop report. Are you expecting any surprises in that report? Uh, December is usually a quiet report. They don't make a lot of changes. The average trade guess versus U.S. and world carryouts is about unchanged from November. Um, the big report will be in January when they fi come up with the final crop number. Uh, we come up with some December 1 stocks, which gives them an idea of first quarter demand or second quarter in the case of wheat. And then also they'll have another month's worth of weather to figure out what South America is doing. And by then, uh, we're getting closer to the deadline of any U.S. and China deal. So January report is going to be a big report. Technically speaking, Steve, what are the charts saying about price direction for the grains currently? The soybean market is in a broad trading range. Uh, it's about a 10 or 15 cent range, and it's not going to break out until it knows about the deal. Um, it's, it's too volatile to trade either side of that because if we have no deal, we break below $9, and if we have a deal, we might trade as, as high as $10. Uh, the corn market's also in a broad trading range. Yes, uh, last week, we failed to move above pretty important resistance, so we're b kind of backing off. Um, also waiting news on the trade, even though the demand is very good and the final crop will probably be a little smaller. Now, the wheat market actually broke above resistance last week, which was positive. It followed the crude market, but now it's given back some of its gains. And so technically, I think the markets are saying they're kind of on hold until we find out about this U.S. and China deal. Final, finally, Steve, what are the U.S. farmers doing? Probably more importantly, what should they be doing? Well, last week I was down in central Illinois, and most of the farmers came up to me, and, and the number one thing they wanted to know was, is corn ever going to rally? So that kind of says that they have a lot of corn to sell. And so as on rally, especially on a trade deal or, or anything, they should be selling their corn. And, and maybe in July, given the low uh, volatility in the options, replacing it with a call in case there's a weather problem next year. Um, soybeans, they're waiting. They're waiting for a deal. They think there will be a deal, and they're waiting for that rally to sell the beans. And what will be interesting is how fast does the basis react? In other words, if soybeans rally 50 cents, does the basis break 50 cents? Um, so they have to be really quick. If there's an announcement or there's uh, Chinese are buying, they need to sell cash and down the road replace it with some calls. How long can the farmer wait? It depends on the individual farmers. Um, you know, the data suggests that like 20% of the farmers are in trouble right now financially. You know, and their banker is probably going to force them to sell whenever they have a bill to pay. Um, on the other extreme, there's probably another 20 or 30% of farmers that's in great shape. And, and they can wait a long time. Um, and they have like, some of the farmers back in central Illinois have enough storage for three crops. And so they can wait a, a long time to get uh, that type of payment. So that leaves the, the middle, let's say, 50 or 60 percent that uh, want to wait, but they can't wait forever. And usually they start um, selling uh, either on a bounce or when they have to pay a bill. Alan, leaving with the industrial commodities this morning, including crude oil, most of this asset class has been under pressure recently due to a slowdown in global economic growth. What is the outlook for industrial commodities, in particular crude oil? Well, we did get a bit of a bounce uh, in the last couple of weeks, but 
I think this is a, a situation that is only going to be temporary as long as the trade wars persist. I would think that the pressure will continue on the crude oil market. I think there's likely to be a move below the $50 support and ultimately below the 41.41 low that we saw. So the trend is still lower for the crude oil and I would be trading that market from the short side. China remains at the forefront of many financial conversations. What is the outlook for Chinese, China's economy and can you lend us your thoughts in regard to the, the trade situation with the U.S. and China? Who's it really worse for, U.S. or China? I think it's very much worse for China. In fact, we just had some economic data today from China. Their imports and exports missing by a very wide margin. Their stock index futures have declined uh, worse relative to the U.S. So I think China is a, in a much worse situation than, than what we're seeing here in the U.S. Alan, I'm going to ask you one more direct trading question. Which markets do you think traders should stand aside in right now? And which markets do you believe have the most upside potential? Okay, the one market to stand aside in, I think, for right now is the stock index futures. We have the ongoing trade war situation uh, taking its toll. <clears throat> Ultimately, though, I believe the less hawkish Fed will come to the rescue of the stock index futures. But until that happens, I would focus on markets that are moving. That would be the interest rate markets, which uh, just made a multi-month high today. Also, the gold market is, uh, appears to be very attractive, also making some monthly highs. So those are two markets that I think I would focus on to the upside. Any breaks in the interest rate futures market, especially the bonds, should be used as a buying opportunity. The gold market as well, if we're right that the Fed is not likely to be very aggressive in raising rates and the dollar cannot continue its uh, advance, those are both very bullish fundamentals for the gold market. Many of the pundits expected the Fed to raise interest rates three or four times. Are they backing off that number? Oh, absolutely. In fact, there was one uh, East Coast bank that was predicting five rate increases next year, and that was as late as maybe three or four weeks ago. They've scaled that back. Uh, now the consensus view is for only one rate increase. Next year, I would not be surprised to see none or just one. The trend is toward a lot less uh, hawkishness from the Fed and other central banks that are accommodative and are talking about raising rates. They are all scaling that back to be in a position where they cannot raise rates anytime soon. So central bank policy is likely to become more dovish next year. Thank you both. Remember, the views and opinions expressed today on this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or Archer Daniels Midland Company. If you'd like more information about our brokerage services, would like to speak to one of our experts about managing your risks, or would like to open a trading account, please visit www.admis.com.